Hello world, it's Birdoprey5, Cupflaw, and welcome to my reaction to the various Star Trek teaser trailers released yesterday on First Contact Day. Uh, we have Star Trek Picard, Star Trek Discovery, Star Trek Lower Decks, and we got some artwork from Star Trek Prodigy. Noticeably missing was anything about Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Uh, let's not bury the lead here. The most interesting trailer to me was that for Star Trek Picard Season 2. And let's go ahead and start playing it. I will be making breaks and, and you know, talking about what I see. So we open up with a familiar shot of his uh, vineyard. Picard is talking about the true final frontier being time. time. Yeah. Sounding a lot time like the Star the Trek Generations movie. Uh, fire is the uh, time is the fire right in now, which Captain. we burn time, time stuff. Is running out. It is, of course, a Paramount Plus original uh, in the United States. Not sure what it is outside the United States. Uh, but time can turn So we got a clock. Okay, we're, we're not even, what are we, not even 10 seconds into this, 11 seconds. 11 seconds into this, and by far the most interesting thing here is this stone, center of the table, center of the room. And you say, well, what is that stone? Does it, does it look familiar to you? You know, you're like, well, I see the Enterprise up in the corner there, and we'll get a close-up of that soon enough. But what is this old stone? And uh, I was surprised. I was, I was shocked and surprised to see this stone, because what is this stone? I promise you, we've seen it before. You know, before? Yes. And you're like, I've watched all Star Trek The Next Generation. I've never seen that stone. And I'm like, you're right. You probably didn't. Because it's not from Star Trek The Next Generation. It is from Star Trek Deep Space Nine. And yes, this is from Season 6, Episode 21, The Reckoning. And here it is in place down on Bajor. It is in fact from an ancient Bajoran city some 10 or 15,000 years old. It's over 30,000 hmm. years old. Over 30,000 years old. Excuse me. These inscriptions, they look like ancient Bajoran. They are ancient Bajoran. Make it out. Neither can he we. can't make it out. The women They've been able to uh, translate a little bit. A little bit of the translation is, is here, though. You the translations. So. The syntax is unusual. But syntax. But Bajoran share certain root ideograms. Yeah, the root ideograms. You recognize this one. There you go. What does that one say? What does that one say, emissary? Welcome. Welcome. Here's where it gets interesting. Uh-oh. What does it say? What does it say? I see you recognize it. Does it say, welcome, Picard? Well, I, I don't. No, Jake doesn't know. It's okay, Jake. They'll tell you. It says, welcome, Emissary. Holy shit! Welcome, Emissary! Why does Picard have a stone that says, Welcome, Emissary, on his desk, uh, in his foyer, or whatever the hell it is, in the future? But more interesting than this, you say, well, you know, Picard is, uh, you know, Picard likes... Uh, doing archaeological research. So maybe, maybe the stone made its way to Chateau Picard. The Bajorans decided to give up a priceless treasure. Uh, but later in this own, in this episode, The Reckoning, uh, the stone meets with, a, with an eerie fate. Uh, and here Jadzia is helping Cisco translate the stone. Yeah, what, is, what does what does it have to say? To turn the tablet until I do. It's the key. Ah, the computer it. just I figured it out. Benjamin. What have you got? 
The computer has translated part of the inscription. Part, part of the inscription. The original passage, but you get the gist of it. Get the gist. Here it is in modern Bajoran. Modern Bajoran. The time of reckoning is at hand. The prophets will weep. Their sorrow will consume. The gateway to the temple. The gateway to the temple. Tell That's Deep not. Space Nine. But isn't the gateway to the temple Deep Space Nine? It is. You're right. This was a very powerful episode. And it doesn't end there. Uh, Cisco has some trouble uh, trying to figure out what the prophets want him to do. In fact, he has to fight with Kai Wynn, but we hate Kai Wynn, so that's all fine and good. The rest uh, of the inscriptions, I would bet on horrible suffering. Yes, yeah, so the, the stone says there's horrible suffering coming to the Bajoran people. What else do you have? You'll love this. It's oh. about you. Oh, it's about him. Once the reckoning begins, the emissary will... Go on. I was hoping you could tell me. She can't read it. Well, the rest of the inscription's damaged. <sighs> it's damaged. It's damaged, but that's okay. Because Cisco figures out what to do in just a few minutes. Not exactly. I didn't think so. So what did happen? Uh, yeah. Cisco, he gets up at night. And he goes over to the stone. So damned mysterious. And he's pissed. He's pissed at how damn mysterious the stone I'm is. Tired of your riddle. He's tired of the riddles. If there's something the prophets to do, say so. need to tell him what to do. And there's what to do. Ah, shit. Wait. He smashed the stone. Look at all the pieces this stone is in. This stone is not going to be put back together again. Okay? And you've got prophets and pa wraith coming out of the stone. You don't need to know all these details. But just know that in Star Trek timeline, this is where Benjamin Sisko left the stone. That's where we last saw the stone. Until... Picard, season two, the stone is mostly back together again. So, I don't know. Is this, is this a hint that Bajor is going to play a role in season two of Picard? Uh, there's been rumors that they've been looking to get Avery Brooks back in for an episode or possibly even a series. Uh, those rumors don't seem to be unsubstantiated. But maybe Captain Sisko will make a return trip, a surprise guest appearance in Picard Season 2. I think that would be far more interesting than the, you know, the surprise that they show us at the end of this uh, trailer. But yeah, so this is a liter a literally a Deep Space Nine ancient Bajoran artifact, uh, possibly put back together. I mean, it does look like it was cracked up. I don't see how they could have really put together what we saw smashed into pieces, but I suppose stranger things have happened. Uh, Pulsive, a most so. ill-considered action. And we got a nice, a nice shot of this painting of the Enterprise D. Into history. We got a great shot of the uh, Stargazer model, but we'll get an even better one. Picard just going off about nonsense. What we do in a crisis often weighs upon us less heavily. Paradise loss. What we do in a crisis often lays upon us less heavily than what we wish we had done. Than what we wish we have done. I think that's a, another way of saying that you mostly regret the things you didn't do in life. And I, I, I do agree with that. But man, is this not a beautiful beautiful model of the stargazer uh, i'm left with the uh looking at this trailer wondering 
Where can I buy this model of the Stargazer? What could have been? What could have been? Well, we could have had a great season one of Star Trek Picard. It could have not sucked, right? It could have been great. It could have not fooled us. It could have not wasted a season. It could have not had giant space flowers and stupid synthetics that were ready to destroy the universe and a magic tool that fixes everything using the power of imagination. What could have been done? Well, so much could have been done if it was anyone else in charge. Okay, now we've got a, a sand... Um, a sand timer dripping upwards. So I'm pretty sure that uh, they're slapping us in the face saying, hey, we're going to have some time travel in season two. That's always fun. Time offers so many opportunities. Time offers but so many opportunities, but never second chances. Well, that's kind of funny from a guy who himself has had a number of second chances <laughs> due to time, due to the nexus, due to time loops, due to Q. Speaking of, hey, there was that Queen of Hearts again. The Queen of Hearts that Data was holding in the first season that turned out to be nothing. Neither the Borg Queen nor Q. But this time, because we all pointed out to them that, hey, you're going to have the Queen of hearts a q card hey maybe you should put q in this show the only thing i'm seeing is that apparently thanos is in this universe and he is snapping one out of every 52 playing cards away instead of half of all life his snap uh, does one of 52 playing cards assuming they're still using a standard deck in the future. Oh. The trial never ends. And John Delancey, the trial never ends. They are just, okay, so it's not even a tease. It's not even, oh, maybe it's a tease. It's not even a surprise. Q, John Delancey is going to be in Star Trek Picard season two. <laughs> And the new season is coming in 2022. Okay, so we have Star Trek Picard coming in 2022. So we know not even in the best case is it coming this year in 2021. Uh, we know John Delancey is going to be in it. And we don't know for how long or how much. I suspect five minutes, maybe 10. Okay, I, I highly doubt... Q is going to be an integral part of the season of Picard. Uh, they introduced him in a panel, and it was almost like he was there as an afterthought, uh, like, like they had filmed the majority of the season or, you know, filmed enough that nobody even knew he was going to be part of it till he actually showed up. So I, I wouldn't get my hopes up. If you're a big Q fan, I think we're going to get more than we did in Lower Decks last season, but uh, not a lot more. Uh, Q might, uh, you know, snap his fingers and turn Picard back into a real human or turn him back into a human with an artificial heart. Or he might snap his fingers and, and I don't know, undo changes to the timeline. I would love to see them, you know, not destroy the Romula, Romulus, Romulan Empire. I'd love to see them bring back the Romulan Empire and never, never have that history go down. But of course, he can't really do that without affecting the far future that is now part of Star Trek Discovery's timeline. So we're actually going to be quite limited as to what timeline shenanigans Q could possibly resolve uh, and that's it but hey at least we know at least we know not to wait for Picard until uh, 2022 uh, which is okay which is something 
So now let's go to the Discovery Season 4 trailer. And man, uh, they're just throwing real quick scene after scene after scene. Uh, but this one is coming in 2021. So we have some information to go with there. Another Paramount Plus original. Why is she wearing, I don't know what this is. To me, it looks like a... A future Power Ranger, Power Rangers suit of some kind. Uh, it's clearly not standard Starfleet uniform. Even for a crew. A lot of destruction. Oh shit! New uniforms. Why did they get rid of the gray uniforms? The one thing I said about season three, the final scene of season three, was that hey, at least those uniforms look pretty good. Now, I admitted that, hey, they, they clearly were a rush job. They didn't fit, okay? It was clearly those you know, season three final uniforms, the gray uniforms. They didn't fit right, but I said, okay, they can go ahead and fit them to each actor and actress over the, you know, over the, the next season so they'd look even better. No, I guess they decided to completely get rid of that uniform I don't know if they we're going to explain why they had a gray uniform for one mission. Uh, so we've got, uh, looks like red, gold, yellow, and blue. Uh, these are fine color uniforms, to be fine, to be frank. Uh, Michael Burnham, I don't know, in that red, I don't know that it's, it, it does a lot for her. Uh, Owo in the gold, Owo looks pretty good in the gold. Uh, I don't know who that lady is behind them. I'm not even sure if that's a uniform she's in. But uh, they're interesting. Uh, I gotta say, they do feel like a TOS uniform, even though they're using TNG colors. Uh, they're not bad. They're not bad, but like, why tease us with the gray if you weren't going to keep those uniforms? Who's as familiar with it as this one? Meanwhile, Michael Burnham is just talking nonsense in the background about how everybody's alone except when you're not alone and how even a crew as familiar as we are, you know, can feel alone at times. What? What? It, it's, it's total and, and utter nonsense. They just have her speaking over. Here's Stamets. So I guess that is a uniform. I guess the blue is a uniform. I still don't understand is Stamets an engineer or is he a scientist? Because if he's an engineer, he should be in the, the yellow or the gold. If he's a scientist, then he's right to be in blue. Sometimes he's listed as chief engineer. Sometimes he's not. Uh, Jet Reno, I believe, might be chief engineer these days. Who knows? The stress is taking its toll. Tilly, I don't know what the hell Tilly's wearing. I don't know what that alien is in front of Tilly. It looks like a large scrotum in a Starfleet uniform. So I'm assuming they finally got some crew members from the 31st century uh, have transferred on to Discovery, and it's not the original uh, crew they brought in from the uh, 23rd century or 22nd. We are not in this alone. And Michael Burnham says, we're not in None this alone. Are. None of us are. Well, that, <laughs> that, that sign kind of proves it. If you have to say none of us are, then by definition, no, you're not alone. And we get some pictures of some future ships. We got that random ring ship in the background. Light years across. Five light That's years the across. Of the gravitational anomaly. A gravitational anomaly according to Stamets. So Stamets knows about this gravitational anomaly. It appears the entire bridge of the Discovery is in runes and gravity has reversed itself. Heading. Now, you would think a starship has artificial gravity. They should not be affected by the gravity outside, but whatever. It could go anywhere. And Tilly says it could go anywhere. Uh, I gotta say, I really like in the yellow or gold and black uh, color to that uniform. Uh, that's that's a that's a pretty nice uniform. We may not have any kind of warning at all. And Tilly says that we might not have any kind of warning at all. 
Oh dear. In 2021. Federation, non-federation. Federation and non-federation. I don't know what species that woman is. I know she's not Cardassian. Uh, it's been speculated she might be, you know, 20% Cardassian or something. Uh, I hope not. Uh, maybe she's a new race. She doesn't look Denobulan. She doesn't look Cardassian. Uh, possibly she's some mixture of something. Uh, or just some new alien. I don't know. Uh, looking at her fingers later, I'm kind of hoping she's just a, a new species because none of them, none of them would make sense. This anomaly threatens us equally. So the anomaly threatens everybody equally. Okay. We'll figure it out together. Indeed, we are more than allies. And, and the Vulcan woman, the president of Vulcan says we're more than allies. So I assume, uh, and by Vulcan, of course, I mean Navarre. <sighs> My guess is Navarre comes back into the Federation in this season. That would be my, my, my guess. At the end of season four, sees Navarre return to the Federation. That lady that uh, she's doing the Live Long and Prosper with, I have a feeling that's the Federation president. I have a feeling that that is the Hillary Clinton of the 31st century, uh, where in a timeline she won the presidency of the Federation. Just a guess. Just a guess. I have nothing to go off of. Captain Burnham, make no mistake. You are in charge. She and of course, you have to remind the captain she's in charge for reasons oh and tall and gray are still here oh boy yeah because that's what everybody wanted more tall and gray it's not at all weird that a 300 plus year old being is dating a 16 year old nope nothing wrong with that nothing wrong with that right neelix nothing wrong with that the face in the face of the unknown. You're facing something we don't understand. Yeah, you're facing something you don't understand. Holy shit, Michael. It's like every episode of Star Trek that ever came out is facing something you don't understand. Every episode of Star Trek since the beginning of Star Trek has been facing something you don't understand from the very first episode of the original series. To the final episodes of Star Trek Enterprise, it was always facing something you didn't understand. Even the movies, even the movies, Insurrection, Nemesis, Star Trek, the motion picture, Star Trek Two: the Wrath of Khan, Star Trek Three: the search for Spock, Star Trek Four: the voyage home. Star Trek V, The Final Frontier. Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country. Every effing time, it is facing something you don't understand. That is the most basic, basic part of Star Trek. And you don't need to repeat it for us, Michael. If we're Star Trek fans, we understand. Right? It's hell, it used to be in the title credits. Searching out new life forms and new civilizations to boldly go where no man has gone before. It comes with the job, Michael. It comes with the job. Something that could tear. Why are you guys wearing swords? What the fuck are you doing? What why are you wearing swords? Us all apart. Poor Saru, looking up at the stars. He used to be a captain. Now he's just a guy on the ground searching for kelp. There's only one way to confront the unknown. There's only one way to confront the unknown? No! No, there's a billion ways! There's infinite ways to confront the unknown. Grudge. Grudge is back. Actually, I like Grudge. By crying? 
By crying? Together. Oh, together. Together is how you face the unknown. New season coming 2021. <sighs> Paramount Plus. Okay, okay. Fine, fine. We, we've got... We got Star Trek Discovery trailer. Uh, there's some Cardassians in this trailer, uh, I believe. Um, Even for a well, let's see. Or is there not? Um, maybe I'm I'm getting the trailers mixed up. No, we had a lady who I wasn't sure if she was Cardassian. Uh, it looks like it's just our, our standard crew. I'll tell you who's missing. Uh, Admiral Vance of Vance Refrigeration. I guess they couldn't uh, pay him enough to be, in, to be in the next season. So I think this lady, I believe that's like a lapel of the Federation. So I do think that is the Federation president. I think Discovery has become, you know, Federation Force One. They probably carry the president around now. Um, Book's still there. Book and Grudge are still there. Uh, so we don't have any new, new aliens except who I think is the president. Um, I was going to say Mocklins. They're not Mocklins. Mocklins are from the far superior show, the Orville. Uh, those are Kelpians. And then we've got uh, the president of Navarre. Drudge, who's a queen. She's a queen. She's a queen. We're going to find out. She's a shapeshifter. If not this season, then soon. Uh, Michael is maybe perhaps constipated in this screenshot. I'm not sure. Just, just speculation on my part. Uh, yeah, so we got Discovery coming in 2021. So Picard in 2022, Discovery in 2021. And then we've got Lower Decks, Star Trek Lower Decks Season 2 teaser trailer. The USS Cerritos, I gotta say, uh, for a ship of uh, ugly design. It's actually looking pretty good in this trailer. Another Paramount Plus original. What up? We doing sci-fi stuff today? Uh, Mariner talking to Tendi and uh, what's his face? Oh shit, I forgot his name. And he was my favorite, the cyborg guy. Uh, whatever. Are we doing sci-fi stuff today? Of course, she's just eating cereal. What up? We doing sci-fi stuff today? Oh, look at this. We've got we've got a Miranda class. An awesome Miranda class. Uh, why couldn't the Cerritos have been a Miranda class? It would have made it so much better. It appears to be the USS McDuff. McDuff. M-A-C-D-U-F-F. -F. McDuff. Almost something like it was something from DuckTales, perhaps. I don't know what the hell's shooting at it. Uh, I almost see like a saucer section here, but I, I can't tell. Oh, it's one of those uh, horned ape things. Okay, that's from TOS. I've seen that thing before. Uh, and the... Uh, the... Uh, the ultimate expression of human martial arts. Of course, Ensign Mariner is uh, perfect, uh, an expert at this. Uh, the power of rainbows. I guess this poor Commander Ransom has gotten uh, taken over by the Care Bear stare. And uh, I tell you, it's very colorful. Very, very colorful. Uh, what do we got? We got people fighting. It looks like your standard alien uh, power source, subterranean power source, that you cut one of these wires and it destroys the planet. Uh, we've got, uh, oh, we've got a bunch of snakes with arms coming out. We've got this poor 
white creature here. I don't know what his deal is. We got some, uh, I don't know, some animals in a tank in the back. Tendi is probably going to start running from this thing. Uh, what do we got? Did we miss something? I felt like we missed, uh, missed the scene. Oh, Cardassians! We've got Mariner in, what is it, gym shorts? Fighting Cardassians. Ah, and yes, yes, it's a short scene. It is a short scene, but let's go back to it. There are, indeed, there are four lights. They're fighting Cardassians. In fact, that looks like the scene where, where Picard was being tortured. Yeah, that looks exactly like where Picard was being tortured. So this is probably the holodeck. This is probably a holodeck recreation. Mariner's in her gym shorts doing a holodeck uh, program where she fights the Cardis. Uh, and they were going to torture her by making her say there were five lights. And there's room for a fifth light. But there's only four lights. Uh, okay, okay. Rutherford, that's his name. Ensign Rutherford, and uh, I guess Mariner. Mariner, who we thought came to an understanding with her mom at the end of last season. Mariner is going to find herself being uh, put back into uh, the brig, apparently. But her friends come out and hang out with her. The only thing missing is Boimler. Oh, the only thing missing is Boimler. He's got to be having the time. He's got to be having life. the time of his life on the Titan. And of course, poor Boimler. Poor Boimler, who got his his promotion at the end of last season. And I I knew this was going to happen. And I said, if this happens, it's going the entire first season was improved by that final episode because Boimler got his promotion. The hard work and dedication paid off and Boimler was actually going places. And I said, if they come and bring Boimler back to the Cerritos, then it's all for nothing. And here we are. This is how it's going to happen. Boimler, despite being a uh, well-educated uh, very, at the end of last season, he was very confident, has lost all of his confidence and became a bumbling fool and is now afraid to serve on the Titan. Uh, really? He's just... To think this jam session's got too many licks and not enough comps. He's thinking this jam session has too many licks and not enough a word I don't even want to say. I, I don't think he said it and... There is no closed captioning for this on YouTube. So I, I don't know what he's talking about. I'm going to give him the benefit of a doubt. It's a jazz term. Uh, and Boimler says, I don't even know what you're talking about. They seem to be fighting a, a, something coming through a wormhole, perhaps. And uh, yeah. And also this, yeah, I got to say, uh, this really doesn't sound perfectly like Riker. It was pointed out to me by someone on my stream. Uh, at first, I didn't hear it, but now that somebody pointed it out. I'm starting to think this jam session's got too many licks and not enough comps. It's possible. There's two, there's two possibilities. One, that they literally got someone else to voice Jonathan Frakes because he couldn't be bothered. Or two, being this was done during the heat of the pandemic, like he literally might have phone called, made a phone call or a Skype call and did the voice over that. So his physical, you know, his microphone might not have been up to speed and we're losing details in his voice. Either one is, is possible, but it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter if this is Jonathan Frakes or not. Because it would appear that Boimler probably uh, transfers back to the Cerritos in the first episode, if I had to guess, in the first episode of the second season of, Lo of Lower Decks. What does that even mean? 
Hey, but we get a date. We get a date. Okay, so Lower Decks starts August 12th. That's good to know. So Lower Decks starts August 12th, and there's presumably another 10 episodes. So that would mean we have an episode August 12th, August 19th, August 26th, uh, September 2nd, September 9th, uh, September 16th, September 23rd, September 30th, and final episode would be November 7th. And now that would put Star Trek Discovery, uh, if they do what they did last time, that would start Star Trek Discovery on November 14th. And that would go through the end of 2021. And it is quite possible then that in the beginning of 2022, uh, we will get uh, either Picard, Picard Season 2, or Strange New Worlds, which, strangely, we had absolutely no trailer, no artwork, nothing. Nothing released yesterday on Star Trek Lower Decks. And I apologize if you hear my dog barking. Uh, you Sassy is just, it's, it's that time of the day, Sassy. Demands attention. Uh, but we're, we're just about done here. So... Okay, so it looks like we probably have Trek going for the last half of the year. Uh, now, at some point, we have Star Trek Prodigy going to come into the fold. And what did we get from Star Trek Prodigy? We did not get a trailer, but we did get the updated artwork with the Captain Catherine Janeway. Uh, now, along with the rest of the motley crew of Star Trek Prodigy Aliens we had seen earlier. So what do we know so far? We know that Janeway is Captain Janeway. She is a hologram. Captain Janeway is a hologram. She's an emergency training hologram that is conveniently packaged with a starship that is somehow lost in the Delta Quadrant without a crew aboard. And these aliens are all from the Delta Quadrant and they find the starship and the, the hologram Janeway uh, teaches them how to use the ship because I guess that's what a emergency training hologram would do, teach whoever is on the ship to use it. I mean, that seems like a giant, giant security risk. Like, what if they were Romulans? Would you teach them how to use the ship? I mean, hell, even the doctor knew not to teach the Romulans how to use the Prometheus in, in, in Star Trek uh, Voyager. But uh, whatever. So Janeway's going to be there as a hologram, so she never has to age never has to worry about getting sick or injured. Uh, so I guess that's a plus. Uh, so Janeway's voice will be there. And of course, we have the same aliens we met uh, before. We've got the Pokemon ball. We've got this troll looking thing that looks like uh, uh, Tuvix had a baby with a... Uh, with a rat or a hamster of some sort. We have this tall looking woman from Avatar, but with less blue. Uh, we've got this guy with the fish face. Uh, of course, now his hair tail no longer touches the tall chick, so I guess they are separate creatures. We've got the rock man. Yeah, not Geode, but a, but a different rock creature. And finally, we've got Blue Yafit. Uh, so that is Star Trek Prodigy. Uh, we don't have a date on Prodigy either, except that it's going to uh, come to Paramount Plus before it goes on to Nickelodeon. 
Uh, I don't know if this is going to come before Lower Decks, uh, but I highly, highly doubt it's going. In fact, I'm pretty sure they said they're not going to run two Trek series at once. So this will either come before Lower Decks or more than likely uh, after Discovery uh, or after Lower Decks and before Discovery or after Discovery uh, in 2022. I'm not 100% not sure, but we will find out. That's about it. There is also a documentary being made about uh, Nich uh, Nicole, Nichelle Nichols, uh, Lieutenant Uhura, and how she changed the uh, U.S. space program. I don't believe that's actually a Paramount Plus thing, but uh, it is being made. Uh, they talked about it yesterday. There, there is a, there is a, some videos that were released on it a couple months ago. Um, that's in the works, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Did these did these trailers do their job? Yes, they got me interested. They got me to talk about it, and I'm. Morbidly, morbidly looking forward to these next seasons. As always, I always hope they are good. I always hope that it's good track and that, you know, I hope I watch these next seasons. I'm like, holy shit, they turn the ship around. I'm a believer again. They, they've got me on board. And yes, I will follow Admiral Picard or Captain Michael Burnham. Or whatever the heck this crew is on on whatever this show is, Star Trek Prodigy. I hope they can change my mind, and I'm like, yes, this is all well worth it. Uh, but uh, obviously, as a thinking adult, I highly doubt that these are going to be quality Trek shows. But prove me wrong, Alex Kurtzman, please, please, from the bottom of my heart. In all honesty, Alex Kurtzman, prove me wrong. Give us that good track that I so much, so much wish for. And I will defend you then till the day I die. With that, thank you guys for listening this long. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please remember to uh, subscribe to the channel comment and like if you wouldn't mind and take care all bird out <laughs>